Chinese guy in China search in English? I doubt they would search in English. Not, you know, probably 100% of people search in China in their own la native language. Same with Japan, same with Korea, and probably a lot of Indians would search in their native language today. And an IDN creates that, that, that value. So, um, and also about search, when we talk about search today, we have to talk about so social media as, w as well. Why? Because if you look at the trend lines, you will see that the searches on Facebook and Twitter has already surpassed Google and Bing combined. Um, so, so social media is also a very important part of it. And of course, on social media, you know, very few people use English actually. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of the, the communities around the world, including China, Japan, Korea, India, they use the native language when they, you know, when they are social, uh, using the social network. Another important trend is voice activated, um, voice activated uh, uh, navigation. Again, when you type domain names, perhaps it's going to be in English. A lot of people are typing English domain names, obviously, today. But when they speak, when they use voice as, a, uh, as activation of uh, online navigation, what language do you think they're going to use? So I think those are the, the interesting development that we're going to see uh, in terms of IDNs and also in terms related to new GTLDs with IDN capabilities. So I talked a little bit about this earlier. I said, you know, besides the, the, the IDN and the search that I mentioned, which is basic, it's probably good to follow the lead of the, of the domain industry as well and take a look at what top-level domains are most sought after. And here you see .app, obviously mobile, uh, and then you, you, you see a uh, blog, which is social media, a book, and, and a few others that are e-commerce ones, and m shop, and movie, uh, music. These are sort of the trending names, if you will. And so it, that, that actually ties very well into, uh, into the way that we see, we, we have uh, from Dot Asia, we are seeing the development of the Asia uh, internet marketplace. Today, the mobile uh, subscription penetration is already very uh, uh, amazing. Because if you look at Hong Kong, Macau, for example, we're above 200%. So everyone actually has more than, more than two phones, or well, more than two mobile subscriptions uh, uh, um, you know, with them. And, and even in India, we're looking at over 70%. The penetration for mobile uh, is over 70%. So this is going to be obviously a very important part. And we're, we're actually um, seeing a lot of that activity in the domain name uh, uh, usage for .asia as well. Here are some of the URL shorteners that are used with .asia domains, and I believe in the future new GTLDs uh, are good because they, they, they provide a shorter top level, you know, shorter domain name. They're very good for uh, URL shorteners as well. And when we talk about the mobile internet in Asia, a very interesting thing also we, we should think about um, looking at the statistics is that more Asians are actually willing to spend with the mobile than anywhere else in the world. So it's 37% over 26%, a big, you know, at least 10% more. So when you look at the trends in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in Asia, um, it's very important to think about the, the ones in Asia versus the ones in the U.S. So the, I guess, and, and it relates a lot, and when you relate it to the activities online, related to, to domain investment potential, there is a difference between this community or this, this marketplace and the U.S. marketplace, I think. Um, and when we talk about uh, e-commerce actually as a whole, as a whole, um, this is including mobile and uh, regular uh, desktop internet, Asia actually will be occupying 40%, 40% of the global uh, uh, B2C e-commerce sales this, this year. So e-commerce is going to be a big driver for internet activity uh, online. So besides that, and, you know, looking at the Asia Pacific region, we are looking at you know, kind of the time spent on the internet. What is the most interesting, whoops, what is the most interesting to see, can you help me bring it back to the slide, is the next slide, which I don't know how to get it back. 
Ah, there you go. Thank you. What is exciting to see is that, you know, when you combine all the times people spent online and offline, what we're seeing is that we're not living a 24-hour day anymore. And, you know, these days people are living a 38-hour day uh, because they're multitasking. So when you combine the statistics, very interestingly, of asking people how much time you spend on TV, how much time you spend on the internet, how much time you spend sleeping, we add it up to a 38-hour day. And that's our Asia uh, internet marketplace today. And what is also interesting about the Asia market is that unlike the Euro Europe and US uh, market, entertainment is the number one. Uh, entertainment is number one usage uh, 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 in, in usage of the internet in, in Asia. And of course, social media is a very big uh, component, as I mentioned. Um, so altogether, I think one of the very important, uh, uh, these are the sort of few important aspects of domain names and of how internet, uh, uh, internet usage is being, uh, internet is being used in Asia. Mobile, social, shopping, entertainment, and of course underlying all of this uh, search is, is of course the underlying driving force. One other thing, one more thing about uh, the development of the internet. I'm sure you've heard of the Internet of Things. Um, and with the Internet of Things, uh, where you can connect to your, your, your fridge, your oven, your, you know, your TV at home, what is going to be very interesting, and I think there's going to be a huge uh, opportunity for the domain industry, is for an Internet of Names uh, to match the Internet of Things. Think about the privacy implications. Think about whether you want your TV to be on Google or you want your TV to be on your own domain. That's going to drive a, a very interesting uh, development in, in the uh, domain industry. And I think when we talk about new GTLDs, and um, uh, I'm quite excited to, to, sh to share some of the .Asia experience, is that Six years ago when we launched, we were you know, telling the world that, hey, we, we need to develop a, a kind of brand, a kind of trust with the top-level domain. When, when most top-level domains were just you know, selling domain names, uh, .com doesn't really care so much about their, their brand. Today, no longer. Uh, every new GTLD that comes out talk about how they're branding, how they are different from .com, how they're different. So I think one of the things about choosing uh, I guess which TLD to bet on is thinking about what value proposition they are putting forward and how they are building the value of their TLD. And here's a little bit of a um, sort of a, a, a pra uh, experience from .Asia developing the mass market awareness and developing foundation of usage, anchor tenants. And as I mentioned, what we found is that the key characteristic of the Asian internet is that it's entertainment driven. So in the very beginning, we've actually worked with the biggest stars in Asia, including Jackie Chan, uh, including the Wonder Girls from the Korea, uh, to utilize and make domain names, uh, uh, make .Asia domain names on it. And we've worked with Capital Dev, uh, we've worked with Bollywood stars to ut utilize .Asia domains. And, but on top of that, it's also important to build the trust with the community, and we've, we've established different community initiatives to support .Asia and on .Asia domain names to build a foundation of usage over the last six years. Um, so I think as a result of that, here are ones that we are not, uh, not activated by us. These are real live .Asia domains that are used else, elsewhere. Uh, entertainment stars are starting to use it. And I think a telltale one is the Asian Marketing Effectiveness Festival switched from their uh, .com name to AME.Asia. And, and you know, that, that's a very good uh, uh, development for us. And that's also a very good development for new GTLDs, showing that you know, the value as we build the brand for, for .Asia. Another very interesting one, actually this is um, a developing usage of .Asia names and I think will be a developing usage for uh, new TLDs as well. Of course on billboard ads, on offline ads, you know, because they, they can provide you with shorter top level, shorter domain names. And here is the Development Bank of Singapore utilizing www.dbs.asia. And you know, 
go, go there and take a look. What is interesting here is that dbs.asia is actually not a separate site or, or the corporate site. It doesn't redirect to the corporate site. It goes directly to the Facebook page. That's another developing usage, I think, that we can see from new TLDs. Because, um, you know, Facebook, uh, well, obviously, Facebook.com slash whatever, but allow, you know, utilizing your own domain name allows you to maintain control of that traffic. Hey, what if, what if next, you know, next couple of years another, uh, another platform comes along and you might want to redirect that traffic to another place? You know, if you are tied in with the Facebook.com, you can't do that. But here is a smart choice with a TBS.Asia. If we ever move to another platform, they can send that traffic directly to that new platform. Uh, we're also seeing very good usage from Corona.Asia, you, you know, having a, uh, a campaign across Asia. And more, most importantly, I think, not only the big brands utilizing .Asia, but actually small, uh, small and medium-sized businesses that are coming around Asia starting to use .Asia domains. And I think that's a very important development. And one of the telltale, again, from our statistics, interestingly, in the last couple of years, um, in the last six years, when we first launched, when we first launched, actually 60%, about 60% of our registration came from the U.S. and 